All right, ladies and gentlemen, let me be abundantly clear. As a serial Notion fanboy and hater at the same time, never been done, no one's ever been like this, trust me. I am in a bit of a conundrum because Notion did something that I was very grateful for, okay? I just wanna make that abundantly clear. I am grateful for the existence of this application. However, they missed the mark again. All right, so first and foremost, for those of you that are unaware, Notion is an application that you probably know about if you're watching this video. But what you may not know is that Notion acquired an application called Cron Calendar in spring of 2022. And after nearly two years of anticipation of, oh, what are we gonna do with Cron? You know, Notion's got this amazing app as it is. What are we gonna do with Cron? We're gonna reskin it two years later and act like it's a big deal. All right, so I don't wanna be rude. I've been kind of a hater, some would say. I'm just probably the most blunt productivity app YouTuber on the planet. The reason being, I like this. This is my personality. And also, while I fundamentally believe in what Notion's doing, I think being hypercritical of them is more beneficial than just saying whatever they do is awesome. So, as you can see, it's time. What's really cool about this, I must admit this is a nice touch, is that on the page itself and on the app once it's installed, there is a ticker that changes based on the date. Like this said 19 yesterday, pretty cool. The 20th when I'm recording this, as you can see in this preview, it's the 17th and that was the date of January that it released. And fundamentally, it's a good application, right? Cron was already a great application and I'm very appreciative of the fact that they released this, but there are a couple things that they did here that were great and there are a couple things that are missing that I'm gonna dive into this video. So first of all, in order to get Notion Calendar, what you can do is get Notion Calendar for free by going to notion.so slash calendar. And then from there, you can click on get Notion Calendar for free and this will bring you to the website, right? And that essentially then prompts you to another one that makes you go to calendar.notionso.com, which is pretty cool, right? We got a couple of things that are pretty cool that I'm gonna dive into this video and by refreshing and upgrading here, I am in the full experience. Now, you also not only have it available on the web, but you also have it available as you can see right here in downloads on a few different areas. You have it for desktop on Mac and Windows and you also have it available on the Apple Store. Now, that is kind of annoying for Android users. Like, I just wanna be blunt. It seems like they've always been thrown to the wayside in mobile app builds by companies and well i understand that if i had an android I, I would not like this at all however they are working hard to bring notion calendar onto the android platform but since they've owned the application for two years i'm not really giving them a pass i don't mean to be this way it's just how i'm built i don't i don't know why maybe i just have high expectations for a company that was i don't know let's do a little quick google search oh a little 10 billion dollar valuation right around when they bought the app so yeah i have expectations I'm sorry, I'm being very tug and cheek here. I'm very excited about this launch. But yes, you have it available on most devices. And the coolest part about this application is after I did this download, all I gotta do is sign in with my calendar of choice. Now I'm gonna point this out. This email is different than my Notion email and that's okay. Because what you're essentially doing is syncing up your Notion account and whatever Google sort of suite account that you want for your emails, right? So I did it with this and then from here, you can see there's some more setup stuff like getting the menu bar, connecting more calendar accounts, setting, I'm gonna set my default one to whatever I want. Uh, we got a, big, a bit of a scrolling bug here, so I guess I just can't do the right one, so that's fun. Once again, multi-billion dollar company, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, you can add more Google accounts. This is literally the same functionality that existed from a baseline calendar standpoint with, with Cron. Uh, and you basically have Google capabilities and for conferencing you have Zoom, you also have Google Meet, uh, so those are the only options, and then Notion. Uh, so in Notion right here, you can basically add a Notion workspace, similar to any API connection you've ever done with Notion, select the account and then allow access. And from there, you have it set up like I do, where as you can see, the email is distinctly different than my main account. So when it comes to my email account, which see right here is this one now essentially the biggest deal about this is that since i have you know connected my calendar accounts and everything i can take these different tasks drum roll and blocks that exist on this calendar and i can add them to specific databases and vice versa how this works is quite literally 
you go to the bottom left and you can press add Notion database. Now, you also can press O right here to add any of the Notion databases. And how this works, shout out to Thomas Frank for showing how a lot of this works on his video, is that essentially inside of Notion, if on the back end of a database, so for example, this task database I have is a linked database. If I go to the actual back end here, what I need is to make sure that a calendar view is set up in the database, not the linked view, the database. And from there, there's this little open in calendar option and then bada bing, bada boom, I click on it. You pick the view from that database. So I'm gonna do calendar view. The reason being, it's looking for the property, right? So this calendar view is for the time property. This is very important because in the Duet calendar, that's a completely different view, but I'm gonna do calendar view. Now, as you can see, this is a little bit overwhelming because I have way too many tasks in my database. But what is cool is the fact that as you can see, if I add a little bit of, if I click on one of these guys, you know, just scroll through these, this record BAU videos. I actually have that time blocked on here because, you know, I'm a nerd and I, I like time blocking, all right? Down to the very minute, all right? All right? Thanks. But seriously, if I were to take this guy and drop it into my calendar right where this record BAU videos is for all intents and purposes, and I click on it and I uh, adjust the time, you see that 11.45 a.m. to 12.30 p.m.? Inside of Notion, wow, I time blocked one to one. That's actually pretty cool. Like, I'm not gonna be here and be like, this stinks, you know, I hate it here. All that sort of like, you know, just over the top grandiose way of explaining things. And yes, this, is, this isn't this is just like spinach, this is a smoothie with matcha and stuff, try it out. But seriously, you can see how absolutely cool it is to have a true Google Calendar to Notion Sync. I'm not gonna act like that's not cool. But what I am gonna do is complain about a couple of things. So first of all, if I wanted to just in its truest form, you know, let's let's pretend like this task wasn't here. I'm just gonna move this, right? Move this. Just let's just let's just pretend with these. I want to create a time block task, right? For this. And I want to call it record video or whatever I want to call it. Record. I use the term BAU, that means business as usual, i.e. this internal content. So record BAU videos, right? So I'm gonna do record BAU videos. Put a little uh, symbol here. Then on this, rather than picking the normal one, which would have been the uh, Rise Productive Calendar, that's my basic calendar, I'm gonna click on Tasks Database, you know, Dimitri, because obviously I need to name it that specifically. So inside of Notion, what you'll notice is something that becomes the biggest issue here. I dragged it on here and one, it doesn't have an emoji. Big oof, kind of stinky. If I press this and then add my normal record, you know, like video icon, it'll pop up. You know, it'll pop up within here, and that's 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 fine and dandy, right? It'll it'll end up syncing, and I'm and I'm very and I'm very cool with that. And you'll notice here it's gonna have an emoji. Now I can zoom in and actually show you that a little bit better, but it's gonna have an emoji here, right? That's really cool. Uh, we're grateful for that. This is this is not like something where I'm absolutely just pissed. This is not something where I'm just absolutely triggered at the fact that it, you know, only has that emoji. But what I am mad about is, uh, you know how people usually prioritize tasks? You know, they have them into different buckets, maybe. Why, in the name of the good, whatever you believe in, uh, stay calm, stay calm. Would there not be any property capabilities here? Like, so you're telling me, you're, you're telling me, right? Like, I'm just gonna, just gonna keep it. You're telling me I have to go into my Notion inbox and then move it, right? Like that's that's what I have to do. And I like the fact that it is an empty page. So if there's a template I like, I can quickly click on it, right? Mm. And I know software is hard, okay? Not one of those people who's just absolutely rude all the time and doesn't understand that this is difficult, all right? But good God, what? Why after two years is it the most basic Google Calendar integration and I can't just click on a property set and like update 
the properties within here, right? Because think about the capabilities if that was the case. Then what I can do is really level this up. So say, you know, you paired that with a nice recurring functionality. Um, and I don't really get how this works either yet, right? So if, if I did like a repeat event, like I can't really do a repeat event. You can see on a normal uh, calendar task that this is like every week on Saturday. On here, I can't do that, which, you know, is like, why? Like, why not? Okay. Like, why couldn't you just duplicate the entity every single time for like, you know, I don't know, a certain amount of years or whatever the, the repeat entity is until maybe I don't get how software works. Maybe I'm just stupid. But what I don't understand here is the fact that there's no basic property integration, right? And, and this is awesome. Like, this is a very nice first step. But the fact that we're so far apart somehow automatically, like, I can delete this, give it a second, maybe I got to refresh. Okay, turns out, once again, here's another bug. I deleted it in Notion. It's not really, it's not gone. So we don't, we don't like that. Um, that makes no sense. I'm going to delete this and maybe it's actually going to work. But, you know, let's try it the other direction, right? Let's say if I delete this on the calendar, will it delete the task in Notion? It will, all right? Maybe it was just a delay. Maybe it was a bug. I don't know. But what I do know is that mother of God, uh, I would really appreciate it if we could have the a certain properties besides just time sync, considering this would make it a daily planner in about two seconds, right? Like this would turn it into the ultimate daily planner app for people like me in in like five minutes. But you just you said, no, the rest of your properties, nah, we're just going to release this. We're going to make it half-baked, make people who are power users like me angry um, and satisfy the public, which actually is probably a smart move considering I, I'm probably one of the pickier customers. Actually, really good job. Hey, let's go, Notion. Hey, good job on this. But seriously, though, it's it's basically a reskin. Um, and while I appreciate that, uh, we're just not where we need to be, right? Like if we have the ability to filter out some of these uh, views, you know, uh, that would be awesome. Uh, some great ways in order to do that, which I will point out really quick is, as you notice here, if I press O and do the task thing, it does ask for a database view, which if I think hard on it, right, let's go back here to this view. Now the calendar view, may include uh, some things, right? It may include here, as you can see, the filter is actually just for tasks that are assigned to me. But what if I added another layer? So I'm gonna make another view here. I'm gonna call it um, something like, and priority is high, right? Now this is an interesting thought here. Let's do high priority Cal. Now let's refresh this. Let's hide this view, which you can do by clicking on the bottom left. And then let's um, do the smart thing, which would be press the shortcut O, click on here, and then do high priority calendar. Drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. Load faster. Do it, but do better. Okay, seriously, I don't, why is it taking so long? Don't be rude, Dimitri. But seriously, um, what what's wrong with this picture? Let's say I click on uh, one of these items here. Actually, Nothing, there is nothing wrong with this. This is how you can do it. I figured out a backwards way into actually making it so that your tasks can accurately be put in what you want it to be. So as you can see, this is a high priority task for me. So inside of Notion Calendar, a backwards way into going into what you want from a you know, priority standpoint or whatever is for me, the only two properties that really matter are time and the priority. Therefore, what I can do is essentially take this, create a new task, right? And I'm going to call it something like, uh, I'm going to grab this one right here. I'm going to just put the most generic task that I'm going to call, take out the trash because that's how I work. And guess what? It mapped to the high priority. Now, this is a backwards way of doing what I was really hoping that they were gonna have from like a visual standpoint, but it works, right? I picked the correct view and then it figured it out. Now, there are some limitations on this. Um, I'm gonna click on this and you'll notice something that's a problem. There is not a way that I can really do much here, uh, except for notice that 
when I click on it, that calendar has high priority Cal. Um, I, I can't, you know, update this in any sort of way to give it an indicator outside of the colors. Like in Notion for me, high priority is, I think that's purple. I'm colorblind a sec, one sec. Yeah, that's purple. I can go to purple. Uh, and then, you know, from there, I can also do things like add more layers onto it and really get fancy with it. Like I can just remove this calendar list and I can do a content calendar. Those are the, like the three levels of priority I have. So I can filter them accordingly to things like content and things like backlog. And then from there, what we would do is we would add a couple more of them, right? So we can add Notion databases. I go to task. Uh, let me refresh so I can make sure I get the views. I go to uh, content calendar, right? This guy's going to be here. I can reorder them into the order of priority that makes sense for me. So at the top, I'm going to make it red. I'm going to click on this guy and adjust this to red so that I know it's content. And then one more time, I'm going to add the last one for that priority. And I'm going to go to something like the backlog calendar which I know is just going to be nice and blue. So now what do we have here? We have some very interesting things to note here. You know, we have a multiple layered breakdown of task options. Now, if these would be able to be renamed, right? If I could actually rename them and not have to click on them to know like which calendar we're talking about here, uh, we would be living in Dreamville, right? Like the fact that I can Let's just delete this again. Let's record BAU videos. Let's do this. Scroll down and I know the colors. Like I get that I know the colors. And I can type out record videos. And I get that there's a nice sync here, right? I'm not gonna, not gonna act like this is a bad thing. And I'm not gonna act like the fact that I, you know, have recurring priorities set up. And instead of needing to time block those, I can literally go into my calendar and, uh, you know, drag these out and then block them. Like for this one, I can put a little oomph on it. And this is the one that the task is being done, you know, instead of it being for the basic time block. I get that, all right? I am uh, I'm smart enough to get how that works. However, eh, mid, you know, like it's missing a couple things. If we get to the point where we, we can recur these tasks and we can really add a lot of layers to the uh, properties, I will be happy with it. Uh, I don't like the fact that it doesn't also add like a new calendar to your Google account, right? Because then when I go on my Google calendar, I don't see these, which considering that sometimes these third party apps bug kind of a problem, right? Like the fact that I can't see that you'd think that I would, I'm just going to stop. I'm going to stop complaining. I got to stop. But yeah, no, this, this is like they're, they, they nearly got it uh, pretty close to the mark here. If you do have any other questions about it, I will say that it is a pretty good app and I'm not going to just pretend like it's absolutely awful. Uh, I still will probably use Morgan calendar because of the fact that they may or may not just meet my needs better in other ways. That was always the case between Cron versus Morgan. However, for those of you that have, you know, the urge to time block, please do this. This is great. You will not regret it. Having your calendar synced with your tasks is underrated. And this is one of the better syncs that I have seen, minus the lack of properties and minus the lack of recurring entities. That being said, thanks for watching. And check out this video on how to improve your skills using apps like this one even more.